Display Week. Welcome to episode four of Movie Night with Nanosys, the Quantum Dot Company. I'm Jeff Urich, Director of Marketing at Nanosys. Display Week 2020 is almost over, and I hope you're ready for a big final day of Quantum Dot sessions tomorrow in the symposium. In the meantime, I'm back with another movie recommendation to wrap up your day. I've been conducting research on the use of BT2020 colors in Ultra HD HDR movies. Each night this week, I'm posting a new recommendation for a film that features a significant amount of visible BT2020 color, along with some analysis and my favorite scenes. Before we get started with tonight's film, I'd like to give special thanks to Vizio Smartcast for sponsoring this research and video series. The content featured here is available on Vizio Smartcast platform, and I found the latest 2021 Vizio P Quantum X TVs are the best place to watch them since they deliver more BT2020 color gamut than any other TV that we've measured, with over 85% coverage of the spec. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button and tune back in for future episodes. Now, on to the feature. Tonight, we're bringing Keanu back for the preposterously violent conclusion to the John Wick's fran franchise. Released in 2019, John Wick 3 finds Keanu on the run again with a $14 million price on his head and seemingly every assassin in the world after him. The setting for this movie is the dark underworld of a nighttime New York City. The filmmakers made great use of saturated colors as part of that rich texture in their set design. From street lights to neon signs and LED lighting, BT2020 colors really contribute to the mood in this film. John Wick 3 was captured in 3.2K resolution, and is just the second title we've looked at this week that was captured all digitally. Let's dive into the analysis by checking the available HDR metadata. The metadata for this film is pretty straightforward. It is a bit unusual to see the max content light level, frame average light level, and mastering display peak luminance all share the same round number value, but that's out of scope for this series. The mastering display primaries are set to DCI-P3, but I think we'll find that the movie uses a little bit more gamut than that. Let's fire up HDR Master 8K and take a closer look at that data. Here, we're looking at a plot of the peak color saturation of every frame in the film. John Wick 3 clocks in at 130 minutes long, so there are over 180,000 frames here. Worth noting that we're looking only at pixels in the 1 to 100 nit luminance range. This helps assure that we're only considering colors in the heart of the visible range, ignoring wild highlights, dark shadows, and many likely encoding errors. The average peak saturation across the duration of the movie is 102% of DCI-P3. That means, on average, every frame in the movie has some content outside of P3. In fact, there are great examples throughout this movie, but a lot of those were just a little too violent for our corporate YouTube channel, so we'll have to leave you to find those for yourself. The highest saturation of any pixel in any frame in the film is 143% of DCI-P3. Let's take a look. The first clip is a great example of the role of saturated color in the backdrop for this title. Here we can see a huge amount of the frame is out of P3. Note the way the cyan light emitted by the neon sign on the left is reflecting off of Mr. Wick's suit as he jumps into the cab. Of course, the cab itself and much of the signage on this street is, are also outside of P3. Next, we're looking at a motorcycle chase scene. Here, the greenish cyan cast from the streetlights push outside of P3. And you also see the red LED taillights on the bikes are way outside P3. That's all for tonight. Please take a break and enjoy the film. We'll be back tomorrow night to close out our series in a galaxy far, far away. See you then.